Yeah, Noreen, we, we, we were having a great conversation. My word, I just love... I love, I just love a sister who loves herself and not just love herself, but she loves her hair and not does she only love her hair, but she knows the history of her hair. And I think what's really wonderful in this particular time of our ascension and our wokeness, uh, we are celebrating our hair. And my belief is that Afro hair is in the process of renewal. Uh, it's, it's emancipated. Uh, it's sort of self ascension, if you like, self loving. Um, and so the sisters are like going, expressing. So going, we, so we were, we were in this interesting. So basically, as I was saying before, I mean, this is Africa hair in all its glory. And I think, in my 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 opinion, from having worked in Africa hair for over thirty five years, is that it's great to see Africa hair in, in all its glory. This is a wonderful crown. And I, I, and I, as I said before, this is renewal. This is nothing. This is nothing new. Our ancestors wore the hair in the past. In a, in myriads of style going. So, do you think um, sisters are struggling go, going? Why are they struggling to, if you like, go natural or be natural? I think part of it is a is a long-standing, um, I would say, misunderstanding with with Afro hair, especially um, if you look at um, our representation in the media now and for the last couple of centuries, is that Afro hair has always been regarded as kind of unkempt which of course it's not. It's because mainstream media has never really understood how Afro hair works. And so, for instance, in, in Latin America, um, for centuries, black women were forced to hide their hair under head wraps, but then they adapted that and made it into their own style and showed their hair off that way through, through head wraps. I love that, um, forced to wear the hair in head wraps. And that's, that, that's a lot, doesn't it? I mean, that was a kind of law passed to prohibit women from wearing their natural yeah. hair in public. Yeah. And of course, um, in West Africa as well, um, locks, dreadlocks, plaits, they're all part of our um, history. And yet in recent decades, a lot of Nigerians don't view that. It's rather disappointing because in mainstream media, they've perpetuated this idea that um, it's something negative to be found upon. And so for much of my individual childhood, I grew up seeing no representation of my hair. And so of course, I wished for long, blonde, flowing straight hair. But of course, you know, as, as, a, as a black African woman, that's not um, the ideal for me. And I realise that by accepting my own natural hair as it is, I am accepting myself. And it's part of my self-growth. So accepting and learning more about my roots and how to take care of my hair and what products it's, it's, it's um, compatible with is a, a step forward. Not just physically for my hair, but mentally as well. Yeah. And ask Derek, of course, his products are amazing and it's had such an incredible effect on my hair and I just feel uplifted um, because through those products and through research I've come to accept my hair in a much more positive light and I hope that future generations of black women and girls and black men and boys can do the same thing about their hair. And Isn't it wonderful guys? This is, this is a 19 year old... No, no, no. British, black, Nigerian woman, I said Nigerian, Nigerian woman, who understands the dynamic, who understands the politics, who understands the culture in relation to what happened to our hair. I mean, of course, others may try going, they may try to suppress it, but you can't suppress this. Yeah. The, 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 this represents, the, and it doesn't defy, look, it defies gravity itself. <laughs> so you can't suppress Afro hair. Go on, Dwight. Are you, are you, are you saying? Um, so my main uh, ver verdict is that if we continue to promote our hair and just explain that, look, it's something to be cherished, just like every other hair type, and it's to be understood just as well as any other hair type, then I think we can really start to move forward. You know, um, I personally think that um, as through my natural journey, I have come to accept that, yes, taking care of my hair will be difficult, but it's worth it because it's long and it has volume and it's soft and I wouldn't have it any other way personally. And I'm so glad above all else that I've broken free of that mindset that it's, something to be, it's, it's not something to be ashamed of, of course. And I just think that to accept ourselves as black people, our hair is probably the first step. That your hair is the first step in terms of um, emancipation.
emancipation. It's um, it's um, liberation. liberation, redeeming yourselves from whatever um, problems you've got. And Marcus Garvey says, it's not the kinks in your hair, but the kinks in your mind. So unravel the kinks in your mind. And I think it, that says an awful lot, doesn't it? And going to the wonderful thing, she says it's about, it may take hard work, but as a hairdresser, show me the woman, whether she may black, be black, Asian, or, or white, that doesn't have problems with our hair in terms of its maintenance. It requires work. And so you find a professional. There are many professionals in your community, naturalists, lacticians, uh, the sisters who braid, uh, the good barbers, the good hairstylist. Uh, and even if it's a chemical that you chose, that you prefer to texturize or to uh, find the professional, find the guys who are able to provide a good service for your hair job. I mean, you had the problem before. You, you relaxed your hair and you removed it. Wow, this is this is this is so amazing, right? This is just so amazing. This is this is this is the manifestation of healthy after Woo! hair of course with the help of share moist nine we're able to maintain doin's hair and its well-being this is actually wonderful and she loves it she loves it doin's so give us one last closing statement of after hair and your experiences well above all else i think that um for me personally um i have to accept that um with my previous you know not understanding my hair i just think it comes from a lot of maybe hair censorship in a way and it's important to break through that misconception again that um our hair isn't um something to be proud of i think pride acceptance and love of your hair is probably the three most important principles someone can have maybe. and that just goes for um any other um aspect of being a, a black person really but again i feel like symbolically Hair has always been our kind of striking characteristic. And the fact that it can be adapted into so many different styles, like braids, locks, um, you know, dreads, all these different things, it just shows you how versatile and diverse our hair is compared to most other hair types. And that on its own is a superpower, I think. You've heard the um, verdict, guys. You've heard the verdict. Doyle says it can be styled in a, in in, in a multiplicity of styles, we call that the principles of the principles of blacks. And what is black? Black simply means bald. The hair could be braided. The hair could be afro. It could be locked. It could be curled, coiled. It could be kinky. Mm. It could be straight. This hair could be straight. And so the reason why we started bald, our ancestors over three thousand years ago used to shave the hair off for hygiene purposes and take the hair convert that hair into a wig. So you've heard the verdict guys from a 19 year old university student who understands she, she's proud of her hair. She's proud of the texture. There's no Afrophobia here. There's no self-loathing or self-hating. This is the manifestation of confidence. Young, gifted and black.